Hello! Welcome to the World Healing Tour podcast, where our mission is to help you heal yourself so you can heal the world. Hi, my name is Noah Crane. Each week, we will bring you tips and tools and inspire you to live your most empowered and joyful life. I'm also the founder of the 3G Effect, a daily practice to keep you heart-centered in everything you do with a positive mindset and a positive attitude by practicing three important elements. Element number one, every day remember to have a grateful heart and connect to your gratitude. When you are connected to your gratitude and you have a grateful heart, you are connected to positive feelings and positive emotions, and therefore drawing more positive people, things, and experiences into your life. Element number two, every day remember to ground in love and compassion. First, believe in yourself, love yourself, be grounded in who you are. You are truly worthy. When you are grounded in love and compassion, you are, rem you are in a place of not judging yourself, but actually loving, accepting, and forgiving yourself, and giving yourself love and compassion. When you're able to do that, you also are able to share that love and compassion with others. We all want more love and compassion in our lives, so why are we not just sharing it all the time with each other? I truly believe that whatever we put out will come back to you tenfold. And element number three, every day know that you are not alone. Rather, you are guided by God. God, universe, higher power, source, whatever you want to call it, I call it God. God is inside you because God created you. God is beside you. God is all around you. Open your heart and soul to God by turning off the noise of others and the noise of the outside world. Have faith and trust in yourself and faith and trust in your journey. God will send you messages and messengers just for you to help guide you on this incredible journey. I know that because my whole life has been guided and I've been able to find my soulmate and marry my soulmate. We've been married for over 27 years. I've been able to write my book and live my, in my purpose and passion every single day. And we all deserve to live abundantly in who we are. The World Healing Tour, heal yourself first so you can heal the world. That's what it's all about. That's why I'm so excited about my guest today because she is all about connections and people. And I always say, together we are one and together we win. Nobody can do this journey successfully on their own. So I wanna introduce her to you. Lynn LaSalle is a certified health coach, certified mastery life coach, facilitator of compassionate integrity training. She holds a degree in business management and marketing. Welcome, Lynn, to the World Healing Tour podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited you're here. And what you're doing in this life in, with your purpose and your passion is so inspiring to me, how you created this incredible group that gets together. Um, and we don't call it a networking group. Can we talk a little bit about why networking is not really a way of connecting with people these days? Well, that's an interesting thing. So typically when I meet people and I describe what our group is all about, I refer to it as the anti-networking group. And most people have a very humor humorous reaction to that. And the reason is because so many of us as professionals are out at all of these events trying to meet other people. And the networking has kind of become so standard, so routine that we're mostly telling people exactly what's on our business card. And then we go home with this stack of cards that's like this high. We may spend hours reaching out to people and the return that we get on that is very, very little. We may meet somebody here or there that we might be able to refer or that may, we may even wanna use ourselves, but we're not actually building a relationship with that person. So where does it go after that? It doesn't in many cases. And so 
what does that result in for the average working professional? It results in having to work 10 times as hard, meet 10 times more people, have 10 times more conversations, and that's only if you're lucky. In many cases, it could be way more than 10 times. The harder we work, the harder it is to accomplish those relationships, to make those connections, the more we tend to end up ignoring ourselves because we're so worn down, we're sacrificing time, energy. In many cases, we're spending money, and we're not learning more about other people, and we're not sharing more about ourselves. And it just becomes uh, that old cliche running on that hamster wheel. I think one of the most important things that most of us don't recognize when we're running on that hamster wheel is that the exit door is right in front of you. You just have to choose it. Mm -hmm. And so... I love I, that. Can you say that again? Sure. Uh, when you're running on that hamster wheel, the exit door is right in front of you. You just have to choose it. I love that. If you don't jump off, jump out, then you're just going to constantly keep spinning. And you know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and not getting new results. So many of us that keep spinning on that hamster wheel or that networking cycle are not going to accomplish our goals in the way that we necessarily want to. <coughs> Excuse me. So what is important about the anti-networking group? I love that. Anti-networking, you guys. Anti-networking. Who? It's about it's about changing it up and doing something different. So we don't do introductions. Because No introductions? Nobody How do nobody, we get to know somebody with no introductions? Well, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, one of the things that I learned from my own personal journey and reflecting back to see where was I, what space was I in? before I kind of figured out where I am today? Well, this may sound silly, but the answer is I discovered I didn't know what I didn't know. And when you don't know, you can't do anything about that, and no one else around you can really help. Because if you don't know, how are they going to know, right? So when we come together on a weekly basis, we share celebrations. So you start to get to know people just by the things they're celebrating, whether it's in their personal life or their professional life. And then each week, I bring thought-provoking conversations around topics that I research. Sometimes I'll bring statistics. Sometimes I'll bring quotes. Sometimes I'll just bring something that was posted in a, in a reputable you know, article. I, I try to vet my sources before I bring anything to the group. And the questions that I ask are very specifically created in ways that I believe people will never ask themselves. So a lot of times we'll have self-reflection, we'll do self-evaluation, and we ask ourselves a lot of those typical things that we're told to ask ourselves. What about the things that nobody tells us about? What are the things we never think to ask ourselves. So I try to really cultivate those questions in a way to get people to think in a different way than they normally would. So there's no right or wrong answers. It's not about providing facts and testing people. It's about seeing where the information that I provided lands and what, question, what answer each person has to the questions because no one will have the same answer because we're all individuals. I mean, I believe truly that we are all created 99% the same. And right in here and in here is the 1% difference. Because if you go beneath our skin, we all have the same construction primarily, right? So it's really what you believe in your mind, the stories we tell ourselves, another cliche, or what we feel in our heart. Most people will look at 
what are the facts? Do I like the facts? Do I not like the facts? How am I going to control the facts? Mm -hmm. Well, the truth is we can't control anything outside of our mind and our body. So when we try to do that, we're already setting ourselves up for self-sabotage, right? Um, so the important thing is just really getting everybody to a space where they're going to think about the questions, they're going to think about what it means to them, and when they start to express what they're thinking, they're expressing what they're feeling. So at the end of an hour, whether we have six people in the room or 20 people in the room, everybody is going to really hear the integrity, values, and ethics through which people conduct themselves in their lives because it's coming from a place that is very rarely tapped into. I mean, technology and society has put us all on that fast-paced hamster wheel. So the people that come to this group are really, or, the, or who are part of this family, are really people who want more. They, they want that human factor. And that's something that technology can't provide us. It's something that comes from within. It's our emotions. And that's super special. Yeah, I, I absolutely, you know, I come to your group and I absolutely love it. And I, even though like I'm here, I'm sharing myself, I'm with you, I consider myself an introvert. Like if I go to a social group, I'm like, oh, I have to go talk to people. Mm -hmm. Like I literally feel the heaviness of it and the, the you know, resistance within myself not wanting to do that mm -hmm. because it's small talk, right? And I feel like that small talk, it's like, how's the weather, you know? It, it just, it doesn't create those deep connections that, you know, like and trust factors, right? Because we buy things, we do business with people, we like and trust, right? How, I, I mean, when I went to your group, that's the difference you feel. You feel like you're, it's almost like these, you almost bring people together um, for just get to know each other, like just play together, mm -hmm. you know, brainstorm together. It's not, there's not that pressure of like, I, you need to get to know somebody, but in doing so, in releasing all the heaviness, weight and the resistance, you just get into this beautiful flow where you could just be with people, even if you're an introvert, you could just be with them and, and be in the listening of them and get to know who they are, like you said, deeper inside their soul, which I think is not revealed on an everyday basis when we're running into people. Would you agree? Oh, I agree 100%, and I do appreciate you sharing that. Um, I remember uh, when we first reconnected was at the mixer that we did in Delray Beach, and uh, I think you expressed that the energy was so different. And it is, because people want to get to know each other. I mean, you mentioned like and trust people. Well, here's the funny thing. If you get to know somebody in that social environment, right? You said play together, which is in a way, how, how often do adults actually take a moment to just kind of like be themselves and relax with other people? And, and that's important because in the end, as they get to know each other, as they get to trust each other, as they yearn to support each other, business happens. Why? Because maybe you don't need somebody's service, but now you know somebody who needs that service. And you say, oh my gosh, I can absolutely refer you to somebody that I would trust to take care, the best care of you. I mean, think about this. When we refer somebody from a business perspective, we're literally handing someone a reputation, something that we work very hard to build and preserve in a, in a great light, right? Do we want to hand that to somebody that we don't know and that we don't trust? No, no one wants to do that. It's almost like when you said that, I, I, I had a picture in my mind like I'm handing a gift, like you're handing a gift, you're gifting somebody something, you know? It's just like it's, it creates that domino effect, right, of, of love in the world because we're extending our love towards somebody else, you know? It, the referral, in a sense, then comes with true care mm -hmm. and consideration to what's going to happen on the other side of that. So I met this gentleman for the first time on Tuesday. 
we had a conversation. I met him through somebody that I know and trust. We had this conversation. And I said, you know, I know somebody back home that I think would be somebody you need to get to know. I think there could be a definite synergy there. And I made that connection between the two of them. They spoke to each other yesterday and they were both so grateful that I brought them together. For whatever happens going forward, it didn't matter. But they got to like each other. They both have the same goals and the same target market. But the irony was that the person that I introduced him to actually might need a service. Now, why did that work out? Because I was the know, like, and trust catalyst that connected the dots, which started with the person that I know, like, and trust. And it just, it branched out from there. So it is a gift. It's a gift of saying, I care about the results that you're going to get from meeting this person that I'm going to introduce you to. But when you introduce somebody that you don't know and you just have a card, right? You, you could just give them a card. What's in that card? You have no idea. And even until they get to know each other. So some of us have businesses that are very easy for people to say, all right, I need that. Let me look up and I'll go down. There's 10 different places, okay, let me just pick one and I'll call one and let's see who's available now, right? So I could tell you I did that. I needed to get carpets cleaned in my house. Five-star review. It looked like it was great, right? I looked at a whole bunch of, and I just, I, but I didn't know them. It was a disaster. Then I met somebody who didn't want to sell me their services, just wanted to get to know me, came to the group, and we became friends. And I happened to share this fiasco that I went through and this problem that I was having, and they were the answer to the problem. And the care, the consideration, the follow-up was incredible. And, you know, I, I'm friends with this person now, probably going on about a year and a half. And I would recommend them for anybody because I know they don't do anything without care. And, and what I hear and what you're saying is integrity. Yes. And, and it, it I means think a lot. And I think that's important for you, the people that you draw towards you and towards this group, is that they, they give their word that they, you know, they're going to stand behind their word. And I think that's something really important to look in somebody you do business with anyways, right? Well, 100%. I mean... I have a very specific belief in, in the way we do things, right? I, I think if you look at statistics, more than 55% of the population defines themselves by their job. Okay, so when job changes, whether you lose a job, whether you quit a job, a lot of people then have to figure out who they are. Most often, they just look for the next job to see if it's gonna be a fit, right? I'm a firm believer you need to be one person, the person that you want to be, the person that you choose to be, not your business identity or your personal identity. Don't be one or the other because then you're shifting depending on who you're with. That could get exhausting. I know because that used to be me. So I believe you just need to be that one person that you want to be, that person that comes from in here. And then everything else is easier and gets better, right? So when you do that, you are being the same, whether you're going out shopping for your life partner or you're going out shopping for a new vacuum cleaner, you're still gonna be the same person when you're interacting with other people. Would you go out looking for your ideal life partner and be somebody you're not? People do that all the time, unfortunately, right? 
<laughs> and that's probably why not all of those relationships work out the way they want them to either, right? So it's important to really think about what's important to you and how you want to interact with other people. I mean, think about it. If there were, and let's just use the vacuum salesman for an example, as you know, in this example, you have 10 people in a room who sell vacuums. They sell the exact kind of vacuum. The service, it's all the same. One potential customer walks in the room. Why are they gonna pick the one person that they pick? It's not gonna be because of the profession. It's not gonna be because of the company they work for. It's not gonna be because of the services because they all do the same thing. It's going to be because of the connection that they make with that one person. We connect with people who believe what we believe. In similarity, not exactly. But that's really what a lot of people are looking for. And we've all gotten thrown into these, you know, rush, 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 go to this event, go to that event, go to this one, go to that one, go to this one, go to this one go to connect here, connect there. And by the time you get done, you're so exhausted, you almost don't have energy to connect with yourself. So that's what's really important. When people come together in, in this community that, that has kind of taken on a life of its own, um, it's really about those connections and also connecting with themselves. Mm -hmm. Because when I ask these questions, they have to first think about what they believe about that answer before they're even hearing. And you know, you mentioned earlier about being an introvert. Uh, so I can honestly tell you, though most people don't believe me, I do not like being the center of attention. So I can definitely relate to that statement. But what's important about that is that when we have these conversations, you may have some people who are the extrovert that love to just really share and share and share and share. But the beautiful part about that is that those of us that are quiet, who just listen, are probably sitting there waiting for that one golden nugget that's gonna help them tap into a better connection within themselves. And that's really the beauty of it. So it doesn't matter how much you say, or how much you listen, it kind of matters that you process both. And it, it seems to be working. That's all I can say. I can speak for myself, uh, but there's been so many people who have shared that it's been a really big benefit to them, so. Yeah, so this is what I feel when I come to one of your meetings. I feel like I come there to fill my cup, you know, because I am connecting with people, I'm speaking with people, I'm finding connections with people that I wouldn't have found otherwise. I'm not looking to sell people. I'm looking to, you know, experience more. It's more of an experience than it is, you know, anything else. So you're coming to an experience. Every time I come to one of your meetings, I'm coming to experience a different part of myself or a different part mm -hmm. of other people. And I think that's what's so beautiful because it's, it's done in such an organic, because the first thing we do is we share what? a win for the week, right? We celebrate, like you said, celebrate. Like, what win did you have for this week? And then the second question, so it's both professional and personal, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the second question is, what are you challenged with right now? Is it, Was that the second thing? I don't remember exactly how it goes. Um, no, 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 the questions are usually, I'll bring up a topic, I'll bring some information about it, and I, I try to keep all the questions in a positive, flow, yes. but some people come and say, I don't have anything mm -hmm. to share as a win this week. I don't have anything positive. Right. And I'll say that's impossible because you can't have a, a negative without a positive, mm -hmm. right? So it could be something as simple as waking up in the morning, you open up the, the shades and you see the sun is shining and it makes you smile. Mm -hmm. That's positive, yeah. right? Most people look at a win as having to be something big, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be big. It's the small things that make the biggest differences. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate that you use the word experience mm -hmm. because 
that's really something that I share. I probably spoke to three people this morning on the phone and I said, you know, when you come to this group, you have to see what the experience is like for you because it's not going to be the same for everybody. And, it, you know, there's no 100% fit of everything for everybody. But when you come to the group, you're finding other people who are looking for the same thing. They're looking for the experience. They're looking for the connection. They're looking for uh, the support. Mm -hmm. With genuine caring, I think that's something that everybody really wants, that little bit of nurturing to know that they're not alone. And I think you said that in your opening of your three things. One of the things is you, ha you don't ha have to feel alone. And that is a big part of what made me start this. I didn't want to feel alone. I wanted to know that I had no like in people that I could trust. And I know if I felt that way, there had to be other people out there. Because I think most often when we go through struggles, even if they're tiny struggles, mm -hmm. we feel like we're the only one on the planet that's going through it and nobody else understands where we're at. And in the reality, I think most of us are like that and feel that way, but we don't have to. We don't get that until we hear other people saying out loud what we're thinking in our minds and then we say, oh yeah, that's me too. And suddenly we feel a whole lot lighter and a whole lot freer and a whole lot better. Yeah, and what it sounds to me that you're saying is the vulnerability, right? People, when you're vulnerable and when you're sharing where you're at vulnerably and you're not afraid, you're in a safe space. Mm -hmm. And I think you create the safe space for people to come out and discuss where they're at, you know, and without being afraid. And when one person opens up and is a little more vulnerable, it kind of creates that snowball effect within other people as well. Yeah, I think, I think that, that it definitely does that. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll always repeat, I don't have all the answers. There's no right or wrong answer. I just have all the questions. Yeah. You know, and the more questions we ask, the more we t start to think, and the more we can start to have that mindset shift, if you will, that can take us always towards the positive because we always get to choose. Sometimes we have what we think or feel is the two worst possible options, but we still always get to choose. And if we don't like the results that we get from that choice, we could choose again. Most often we'll default to believing that there is no choice, that there are no options. We've kind of hit that wall and that's not true. And that was something that I learned on my own personal journey. You asked me before about um, how I come up with these questions. I think about all the things that I never really considered to ask myself, the things that kept me in a low space for a very long time. I've spent more time in the low space than I have in the great space that I'm in now, but I'm so thankful that I went through all of that because I don't think I ever would have learned the lessons that I learned and been able to share that. So I'm always thinking about what are the things that people would never ask themselves? What are the things I never asked myself? And I try to bring it in terms of that. And I'll always bring it around both business and personal because I'm very, very, uh, um, focused on, on that one identity. I truly believe that it is so important for us not to think, all right, my business head is on now, my personal head is on now. I really think we need to just be one person. And, and I am, I'm the same person now in any environment, no matter who I'm talking to. I don't worry about what other people think of me any longer, but I lived a long life of worrying about what everybody would think of me what judgment anybody may pass on me. And so I used to kind of shift 
who I was based on who I thought other people wanted me to be. And I think we get very programmed into that, sometimes because of our upbringing and very often because of the bosses we may have. The things that we learn from the jobs that we're on and the, the uh, tasks that are imposed upon us, and we come up with these impressions of what we think is expected, even when it's not actually told to us, right? So those expectations, if you will, that we have in our own heads become our own jail, if you will, because we, we put ourselves in there. Yeah, and we self-sabotage. You know, Absolutely. we self-sabotage, mm -hmm. we're in our own way, and that's why being with other people helps us get out of our own way, because in servicing others, in being with others, in connecting with others, that's where the change starts happening. That's where you start, because what I always love is that when I'm around people, uh, especially positive, uplifting mm -hmm. people, right, they get to mirror to me who I am. So even if I'm going through a hard time and I don't see my own beauty in that second or in that moment, I can look at them and see my beauty through them, you know? So we're all kind of like that mirror for each mm -hmm. other. And that's why connection is so important and separation, you know, during COVID, we were all separated. Mm -hmm. It's the worst thing for a human being is to be separated, you know? Like they say, staying home saves lives. No, it doesn't save lives. It makes us separated. It makes us sick because we need those connections with each other. They're crucial for our mental health, for our wellness, mm -hmm. and for everything. And I always say, Lynn, so what, going back to what you're talking about, is that most of our suffering is optional. We don't have to suffer, but we suffer because we self-sabotage, because we're in our own way, because maybe for some reason we don't think we deserve to be happy and we don't deserve to have the support and love of others. But it's available, it's there. So all you have to do is really step out of that hamster wheel, right? Like you said, mm -hmm. take that exit door out and there's a whole new world out there. And what Lynn is doing is she's creating this incredible um, inner power partners, right? It's called mm -hmm. IPP, where people come together on a weekly basis. Um, so can you tell us more about IPP and how they, how the meetings are and where they're meeting and how, you know, so people can get to learn more about the structure of how the meetings go. Well, I appreciate you asking that. Um, inner power partners started with two people, um, just a little more than two years ago. And I really believe that we could bring this to a larger group of people because there couldn't just be the three of us who were benefiting from making these connections with each other, supporting each other, helping each other. And so I started a location in Carl Springs. The crazy part is that a little more than two years later, we, we now have six in-person locations and one virtual location that I just recently started uh, in February that I call IPP Global USA. And some people may say, why? Why not be in person? We just talked about how important that is, right? Well, because of the pandemic, I made a lot of friends around the world. I got very connected to a lot of people everywhere. And I know a lot of people across the United States. And talking about what was happening with the in-person groups and the growth and the expansion of how more and more people couldn't come to the message, so I had to bring the message to the people, which is why we've grown into multiple locations. I had people that I would speak to online who would say, well, when are you bringing this virtual? So that human connection is what everybody's hungry for, so much so that it, it almost doesn't matter how they get it, right? A lot of people didn't believe I can even bring this model to the virtual space. And it's amazing how great it's going. We do the same thing in the virtual space that we do in the in-person space. So imagine when you come to the meetings, we're sitting all around the table. We're there with each other in person. We're not talking one at a time. It's an open forum conversation. It's let's just really interact with each other. This is important. What you have to say is important. It doesn't make a difference how minor it might seem, but I'm gonna hear something important that you're feeling. And if it, if it feels important to you, I wanna hear it. And then everybody just kind of jumps in. 
oh yeah, you know what? What you just said just made me think of this. Oh, and what if you did that? Oh, we should definitely get together and talk about this because I, I think I can help you with that problem. There are some people that'll come to the group and just say, the most positive thing that I had to look forward to today was that I knew I was coming here. And that's not about me. It's about the community of people that they're coming to that they know that they can trust with anything that they want to share, no matter what it is. And they can be confident that somebody's going to be there for them. Maybe there's a lot of people on the planet that have that, and they are lucky. And then there's a lot of people on the planet that don't. But whether you have it or you don't, when we all come together in a community, whether we're in a little box on that virtual space or we're around a table speaking to each other, we know that we're going to be there for each other. We know that whatever we want to share is unconditional and there's not going to be any judgment. I love the virtual component. I actually want to join that. I think it's very to important it, sure. to go global. I think it's very important. Uh, you know, World Healing Tour, I also see it as a global message and a global thing. And I think that you're right, it doesn't matter. The in-person thing is amazing, but on Zoom, you still can find the connection, you can still find the support, you still are there in one way or another, and you're connecting with people from all over the, all over the world, which I think is so cool. So how can people that are watching us connect to the Zoom, to the virtual one? What do they do if they want to connect to virtual? Well, so each of the locations, and we have some after hours, some are midday, and then we have the virtual space, which meets uh, midday on Monday, mm -hmm. but anyone can go to Eventbrite and find any one of the meetings, but the best way to really connect with anything Inner Power Partners would be to go to the website. Uh, we, we have an extensive website. You can see some of the partners of excellence there, but we have an IPP calendar. So anything that we do, whether it's a mixer, whether it's virtual, whether it's an in-person meeting, everything is right there on the calendar. So you would just need to go to Inner Power Partners, that has an S at the end, dot com. And everything's right there. Uh, being able to connect with me is right there. Learning more about me is right there. Learning more about each of the partners that are featured on there. It's, it's, you're going to learn about them as people before you learn anything else. And that's what's really special about it. I've kind of gone to the flip things around, if you will, in our anti-networking space. It's about learning about the person first. The business can come later. So actually, if you were to go to our website and go to the partner profiles, and you'll have one there soon, uh, that people are gonna learn more about who Noah is, because you're gonna tell a little bit about yourself in your profile, and then, you're gonna talk about the passion behind everything you do, whether it's business or personal, right? They're gonna see a picture of you. Now they're gonna know a little bit about who you are as a person. And if they like who they see and what they read about you, then they'll be able to click on any link for anything that pertains to you and your business. If you have more than one business, I know you talked about your three G's. Uh, you're talking about doing this. You've done many things in the past because we do know each other for a while. Every single thing that you want somebody to know about you will be right there. They can click on those links and learn that about you. They'll even be able to click on a link to be able to listen to your podcast. But they're going to learn about who you are first. So they're already going to know that they're interested in who you are before they go anywhere else. And that becomes a warm lead not a business card that you don't know anything about that person. Business cards are great because it's a great way to share contact information. I'm not saying anything negative about that. I'm just saying we look for more, we can get more. And that's important. Yeah, and you know, 
you, you know, who you know is really what creates your life. I mean, you know that. I mean, knowing the right people can completely transform your life. And so this is an opening for you to get to know people. And I love what Susan Orman always says, people first, right? Then, then money, then things, right? You got to put things in perspective. And so often we have it the other way around. We put money first. We put things that are not really important. Those things come when you're being authentically who you are. Those things comes when people know, like, and trust you, and want and want to be in your life, and one, and I feel like you're really revo revolutionizing, revolutionizing the way we network. Because if you ask me, this is the first time I've gone to a network, and I felt like I was a part of something, and not just an outsider standing there watching everybody with their small talk, and felt like I can't get in the middle of this circle because it's going to be awkward. What am I going to say? What are they going to think? What a, here, we're like around the table, around the dinner table, around the dining room table, whatever you want to call it. We're family. You're creating that full circle, the full circle with the missing pieces, right? Mm -hmm. That we're all kind of bring together. Nobody can do it by, by themselves, but you bringing, what you're doing is you're the messenger of bringing together all those pieces and all these beautiful people that otherwise could be alone, could be stressed. Mm -hmm. And I know you talk a lot about stress, right? And the, and the disconnection that we feel when we don't have those kind of connections. Yeah, I actually appreciate you bringing that up because uh, as a coach, that's basically what I work with my clients on is helping them manage stress by becoming the authentic identity that they really want to be. How IPP originally got started, how the idea even came to fruition, was I got frustrated trying to get my message out and it felt like nobody was listening. So I just started asking everybody one question. What's stress costing your business? And oh boy, the reactions that I got from every single person I asked that question to. And that made it very evident that so many of us have actually normalized the daily stress that we deal with at work, which then brings a daily stress at home. And we normalize it so much that we're not paying attention to it. We're not actually dealing with it. And truthfully, that becomes the stress that becomes chronic and toxic and kind of works at us from the inside out before we get any signals or symptoms that it's even happening. But if we can learn how to be able to be okay when things seem frustrating, to be okay when we're dealing with stresses or discomfort in an experience and know that we have somebody else that we can go to and say, I'm dealing with this awful situation have you ever experienced anything like that? And what might you have found as a solution to help with that? And suddenly you're not the only one dealing not only with the stress, but your stress, because you have support. Most people will not take their, go home from their work stress and ask for help at home. And most people who have difficulties at home will not go to work and ask at work for support around that. So what do we do? We never ask for support. We're never asking anybody to be there for us. And we can get so worn out that we may not even have enough to offer. So I'll ask the audience to think about how would you feel? What would it look like if you were able to completely figure out how to manage your daily stress. It's gonna look different for everybody. And believe me, I know I frustrated the person that was helping me try to figure that out. But it's the best freedom you can experience when you figure out that you really can take back control of your life and make it look the best way you think it should look for you. And that's really what happens when these, these groups come together. So I'm just going to say uh, we're out, we bounce out of the routine where we, I dare to go against the grain 
and it seems to be what everybody is liking that comes to be a part of this family. Yeah, and I, I even like I read, you know, you have a WhatsApp group where people like post things. Um, and, you know, I even read a message this morning from somebody who said he's just so grateful for the people. So I see so much gratitude just coming mm -hmm. forth. And it must be so nice for you to get this that feedback because you really are doing something that improves other people's lives. And that's huge. That is being a true coach, a big coach, a master coach, and really helping people heal because the, the togetherness brings the healing together. So that that is great because being alone does not serve the world. You know, mm -hmm. it does not sitting on the sideline and not, you know, self-sabotaging. We all do it. We all do it. Do you know that I didn't swim for, I know you don't know that, but I didn't swim for over 20 years. And I was mm -hmm. a swimmer my whole life. And I was completely like self-sabotaging myself. I completely, you know, forgot about that piece of myself that I so love, swimming in the water, connecting to the, to the flow of the water. I'm a Pisces, I'm a water person, right? But I was so getting in my own way from ex experiencing the, the release of the swim, you know, the release of the flow, the release of the energy, just letting it flow through me. And that's what we do. We don't even realize we're, we're doing that to ourselves, right? And, 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 and we're, we're getting in our own way. And that's why I think having a coach to me is priceless because, you know, having mentors, having a community, mm -hmm. those are all things that we need. Nobody can, I tell my husband all the time, because of you, I get to be me. I couldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for his love and support. And I believe mm -hmm. none of us become who we are without the love and support of others in the world. Well, so here's an important piece of that. I'm thinking about what you're saying and how beautiful that is that you have that relationship with your husband. And I, I think about what I went through in the past and where I am now. The most important piece of that for me is that when you have someone who is supportive in that way. You said you are who you are because of him. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing how you feel when you have people that encourage you to be the person you want to be rather than feeling like someone's trying to prevent you from really being yourself? So. As a coach, I have been told that the best connections that I make are the connections that I help people make with themselves. But I want to say that although I, I brought this message to now what is a very large growing community, I really don't take credit for what's happening within the community because you, you can put down a blueprint, but it's the people that are making the blueprint work it's the people that are being there for each other. They have each other. I'm not involved in every single relationship. And those people deserve to be celebrated for showing up for themselves and really becoming who they want to be in such a strong way, whether that means being vulnerable or whether or not that just means being there for somebody else. It's, it's a great celebration of each of these individuals. So when people are posting these great uh, gratitude comments in, in our chat, it's a big celebration of that person because they're showing up for themselves, which has brought all of that to them. They have magnetized that positivity from other people, those relationships, the, the want for connection from those other people. So it's, it's a community effort. And I think that's really what's so great about it. And in the virtual space, to be able to bring people who aren't geographically able to sit around a table, but yet interact with each other as if they are, it's so powerful. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that what I believed could work actually did. I would say to anybody, when someone challenges you, just say, I'll make that happen. Because 
each and every person has an inner power that they may or may not even recognize yet. But when you light that up and you put that out there, you're not only changing your own life, but you're impacting others. And, it, and people don't have to recognize it and be able to touch it and feel it or quote it. They just need to be able to experience it. And that's a word that you highlighted at the beginning. And um, I, I want to make sure there's attention to that because what each individual experiences is really everything. That's the power. I love that. And, you know, you planted the seed for us, though. You know, you... There's a, you know, there's something very special about planting the seed and watering the seed because you've done, you made so much effort. And so we do celebrate you and Thank you will you. get the attention because, you know, you, you planted a seed that's making such an impact for all of us, you know, and it's that snowball effect that we are doing for each other, but mm -hmm. you planted that seed. And so I think I to celebrate that. you is Thank just you. like, you know, it's, 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 you're such a gift. And what I love the most about you is that you're just like a very authentic person. Like from the first time, like I'm around you, you're just authentic. You speak your truth. You don't BS anybody, you know, <laughs> you are what you are. You know, I told you before, you're like a mama bear, you know, <laughs> you just want all your cubs to be happy, you know? And, and that's a beautiful, beautiful, um, what a leader does, right? A leader that really cares and makes a difference in the world. And so um, I want people, I want you to just, you know, I want everybody to know about this because like here, there's a virtual option. You don't have to live in Coral Spring or in Boca Raton or in Boynton Beach to be a part of this network. You can be anywhere in the world and you can connect to incredible people from all over the world in this networking and really create relationships and grow yourself, grow your business and become more of who you're meant to be in the world so you don't have to hide out anymore because there's people here that really want you to win and that's how i see ipp um, we're here to empower each other to exactly. win right in life exactly exactly and, and nothing is perfect nothing is perfect right so we win by being together by standing together by supporting together not everything is a win but if you stay together and you keep going forward, that's the win. 100%, and you know what it is, what I'm learning a lot in now in this coaching training that I've done, is that to look for the gift and opportunity. Everything we do, I know you would agree, Lynn, mm -hmm. even the hardest time, even our lowest time, there's always a gift, a gift and opportunity in everything. So we can, when we can connect to what's the gift, like you said, just opening the window that day, right? Looking at the sun. You did that today, that's a first step. So if we could learn to get our mind to program and see everything in life as a gift and opportunity, whether it's a win or not a win, it's a gift and opportunity for you to do something with it. Because as long as you're alive, you have that right. gift and opportunity to access incredible people, incredible things, and change your experience here in this world. Because we're all here to, what you're doing is to help people shape their experience by connecting to each other. And there's nothing, I really think there's nothing more important than that human connection or that virtual connection that can really change perspective, change the way we see things, and, 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 you know, and fill our heart, fill our minds, fill our soul with gratitude, with love, with possibility, mm -hmm. with, with, with new things to look forward to because, you know, who we are right now in this moment, right? It's not the past, it's the future that we're living into. So you're having people li live into a possibility, into a future, into something that they didn't see before. And I think that's what's so beautiful about the empowerment that you bring. Now, I know that you don't become an automatic member of IPP. Can you kind of take us through how the process works? Sure, um, because of that keyword experience, it's really all about having people come in and experience the hour by, on their own with any one of the groups and everyone is different even though we all have that similar focus each group is different because it's different people from different places but it's it's important to have the experience so i want anybody that wants to know more about it to just come and experience it and then determine whether or not it's the right fit for you and it won't be the perfect fit for everybody and that's okay because by having that experience you're making a choice about what is good for you. So whether you 
join us or you don't, it's your choice and you're making the best one for you. And that's the only thing that I could ask. I love that. So how many meetings can we come to before we join or how does it work? Because I know there's a membership. Can you kind of? Yeah, I usually, um, I tell people, come and experience for a meeting and then make a decision. I give them more information. Some people need to really think about it and get the experience again, knowing what they're walking into. So I say come for a second time. Beyond that, you kind of can know whether or not it's going to be the right experience. And sometimes when they come from a second time, they'll go to a, a different group. And sometimes it's just a matter of the environment that you're in in the moment. And that's really the, the main focus of it. So um, I would say the best thing for anyone to do if they have any questions is just go to the website, click on a Become a Partner form. What that does is that gets me your information. And then I give you a call and I say, what questions do you have and how can I answer them for you? Can you give us the website again? You sure can. It's innerpowerpartners, with an S at the end, dot com. It's real simple. Um, and, and any questions, I'm happy to connect with anybody either by email or by phone and answer any questions you may have. Yeah, I, I can tell you that I made up my mind really quickly, didn't I? <laughs> I just knew, you know, when you know and you just feel like it's right for me, I don't take long because I know. But just like she said, come experience and, and see if it's for Everybody's you. experience is different. And I've had yes. people, I'll be honest, I've had people who have taken seven, eight months to decide whether or not they wanted to come back, and they did. And they're very glad that they made that decision. So there's no stress and no pressure about any of this. It's just providing a venue for an experience and for those who will benefit from it and want it, we're here for you and we'd love to have you as part of the family. Awesome, thank you, Lynn, so much. I so appreciate this conversation. I, I was so looking, looking forward to it and I know that you, know, you watching out there will love to connect to this group because it will change your life. It has changed mine and I'm so grateful to you, Lynn, for creating this amazing group. Well, thank you for creating this space to get the word out and help me spread the message. Of course. Well, I want to thank you today for joining me and the World Healing Tour podcast. Until next time, remember to have a grateful heart, to ground in love and compassion, and know every day that you are guided by God. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Namaste.